We're going to go live again. We're going to go live again, and it's coming right up on 5 o'clock. Actually, just past 5 o'clock, so we're right on time, right on time, literally within seconds. And let's see if I can find this broadcast on the iPad. And there it is. It looks like that's and it. And yes. On. And we've got good audio because I did a double boot. I did a double boot, so we got good audio. And... I'm wearing uh, my favorite Kenneth Gordon shirt today because we talked about Kenneth Gordon yesterday and specifically the Heirloom Collection shirts that were made in the USA. And we talked about how now some of their shirts are offshore, are being made offshore, and I'm not real happy about that. And I had a comment from a, a subscriber that said, why? What's such a big deal? You know, they're just trying to cut costs and so forth, and so they're making them overseas. What's such a big deal? First of all, a lot of times the quality suffers. By my personal experience, the quality suffers. And second of all, <clears throat> I, for one, would rather pay more and support American workers. So there's how that whole thing works. So I am very pro made in the USA. All right, man. Some folks were in real early. Stig was in the house. Kyle was in the house. <clears throat> Let's see. Lance was in the house early. Uh, Kyle's all over the place in here. Lance is all over. Durr's, Durr's hanging out. He says Tudor sucks. Yeah, we'll pass on the whole Tudor thing. Lamont's in the house. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, okay, so that's who's in the house. And again, one more look at the um, the Kenneth Gordon shirt, and let's do a close up on the stunner, the two three one. Okay, so because we're going to talk about this a little bit today, move this around a little bit so it's easier to get to. We're going to talk about this uh, today because <clears throat> I've been giving some thought to some of these newer models that have come out. And I did double check. This is 14 millimeters thick, is what the actual Grand Seiko website says. And a lot of those newer Grand Seikos that have come out, these new GMTs and so on, are more than 14 mils, 14 point something, right? <clears throat> and so I'm like, what's going on here? This, this particular model's been out for years, many years. And it's thinner. Now, this doesn't have a GMT complication, but it's a diver. So a GMT should be thinner, in my opinion. The, the Rolex GMTs are thinner than, the, than their diver's watch, right? Now, the Rolex GMT is, is a 100-meter watch, but that's what they should have done on the Grand Seiko GMTs. They should have done the same thing, and they should have made them thinner. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to say that for a sport watch, the 231 Stunner, plus this is titanium, the 231 Stunner is still the best option out there, even after all these years. So sometimes the oldies are goodies. The oldies are goodies. What do you guys think? Is that look at look how stunning this watch is on wrist, by the way. What 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 do you all think about that? Guys and gals? Leslie's in the house. Shout out to, to the gals in this world. What do you all think about all that? Is that radical thoughts, the radical, radical situation, radical positions that the oldie could be the goodie? Look, it looks nice and trim on the wrist. It, it hugs the wrist nicely, even though it's 14 mils. <laughs> it fits nice on the wrist. <clears throat> so let me know what you think about that. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, the Okay, Lance, yes, uh, but I shall have to admit that Craig is right about the maxi case. Actually, it's a super case, they call it. I have to wear my sub tighter than I really want to. Maxi case sucks. Um, okay, let's see, Stig. Uh, why do you have to wear your sub tighter? Is the head of the watch that unbalanced? Uh, let's see, uh, you should look into getting a pre-ceramic sub. Well, hopefully they're going to fix the case. Many people dislike the super case. I hope for a redesign, says Kyle. Absolutely. I agree with him. 
<clears throat> there's in the house I have two current model subs I don't have to wear them uh, than my other watches yeah I wouldn't think you'd have to do that but still I'd pass on the whole super case thing Cheetown's in the house hey Craig currently typing from a seven year old iPhone the pixel phone is in the shop getting fixed well speaking of getting phones fixed my iPhone 10 has started to swell a little bit I think the battery's starting to swell and starting to push the the screen up a little bit so I have an appointment for next Friday to go into the Apple store in Bethesda and have the battery replaced so fingers crossed that that goes smoothly <clears throat> this phone is coming up on three years old and I still love the phone so I'm planning on getting it fixed getting a battery put in I think they said it'd be sixty five dollars so we'll see how that whole thing goes first time I've really had to have a repair done on an iPhone but three years is about what you should expect to get out of lithium-ion batteries I think I think that's pretty normal for a heavy use piece of kit <clears throat> let's see here Stig says hi Chi how how bad are things in California please clarify here we get information about fires <clears throat> Did you see the dog man just did a live stream? He's selling a few watches, including the SBGA229, but he's keeping the two subs and wants a third. Oh, jeez. He needs help. That man needs help. First of all, he should have never bought the 229 in the first place. He should have bought the 231, and he should sell the subs. But anyway, he's got, he doesn't have a clue. Leslie's in the house. <laughs> Hanky Panky is still made in the USA if anyone is looking to spoil their girl girlfriend cool <clears throat> do tell uh, Durs in the house speaking of quality suffering how about those Tudor GMT's to told them I've I actually have not seen them in person so I can't really comment but I can't imagine why somebody would want one of those watches Chi towns in the house the fires are bad mainly northern but people north and east of San Francisco are doing mass evacuations. <clears throat> Has anybody ever heard of forest management? No, duh. You know, they let like all the dried wood stay on the ground and stuff and all this kindling for these fires, right? And then they wonder why they have big forest fires, right? Duh. <laughs> it's not rocket science, folks. Uh, but anyway... California is so mismanaged it's like absolutely pathetic it's a, such a shame because it's a gorgeous place gorgeous place too dry though that's why they have all the fires too dry I didn't like I didn't like that aspect of it just every it, a lot of areas are way too dry you get on the east coast and you see all the foliage and all the greenery and everything you get so spoiled uh, let's see um Uh, Lance is a smart man. He already realizes you have to keep the wife happy. There you go. Grand Seiko needs to get its you-know-what together with its case dimensions. Kyle says it would be a trade-off, though, Craig, because new GM tree pieces are 40 millimeters as opposed to yours is 43, 44. Yeah, but they could make them thinner, Kyle. They could make them thinner. I don't understand. It should not be an issue. It should be thinner than this watch, not thicker. Especially if it's a smaller watch. You know, if you have a smaller watch and it's thick, it, it makes it look even thicker, right? If you spread out that thickness with a bigger watch, you know, everything's more in proportion, right? So to, to my way of thinking, if it's a 40 mil watch, it should be even thinner still. <clears throat> so there you go. Thin is good. 231 still the best, says Blue. I think so. Dur says, I just went and threw the 229 on for the show. There you go. We got to get him to upgrade that to a two three one. That's what we got to get Durr to do. And not, none of this silliness about the gold not looking good. Ask Leslie. The gold is eat up with class. Look at the little touch of gold on there. You can even see it from that distance, right? Let's take a close up. That little touch of gold. It just adds a little bit of, a little bit of pop, a little bit of class to the situation. And let's get Leslie's opinion if she'll chime in on that if she's paying attention. We'll see if Leslie's paying attention. Let's see here. Um, 
<clears throat> What's the new pin on Craig's chest? Is there something that he's not? Oh, okay. So you're observant. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. Chi Town says, uh, time to get the battery placed on that iPhone. Don't throw away an iPhone just because it needs a new battery. That's the way. Yeah, I mean, 65 bucks. I think it's well worth it. Hopefully, they'll do a good job. I've got an appointment for Friday. Hopefully, they'll do a good job. I think what they do is they switch it out. They'll give me another pretty much identical phone, and then at their leisure, they'll replace the battery, and then that phone will go to the next guy, right? I don't think they do it while you're there. I think they just switch out the phone with a, you know, the, the, the same basic phone and then, uh, you know, just replace the battery when they get around to it. I think that's how they do it. Maybe somebody can chime in <clears throat> in the chat and let me know if, if I'm correct on all that. Let's see here. Um, probably one of Craig's trusty DuPont pens. No, it's not this time. Uh, Dogman has no clue. I still want to see Dogman versus Craig in the live show. Um, roughly six point eight. Okay. okay, so this is um, this is my Millennium. It, I think it's called a Millennium. Yeah, my Millennium pen. It's a Fisher. It's a space pen. Okay. Millennium. And the reason I put that in the pocket, it's usually on my desk. It's usually the pen that I write with most of the time. It's got a nice cloisonne on the end there. Can't really see it too good. But the the reason that I put this one in the pocket is it's the right color, right? As opposed to the gold pen, right? If I had the gold stunner on, I'd have the gold pen on. But I just figured I'd mix it up a little bit and just put that. The Millennium pen is, is cool in that it has the large ink... Uh, 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 ink storage area, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it doesn't have a a uh, a refill, uh, right, right? You can't you can't take out the ink cartridge and put a new one in. This is permanently part of the pen, the the ink well, the ink that's in here, right? And it supposedly will last your lifetime. You'll you'll never have to fill it with ink. But if it ever runs out, you send it back to them and they'll replace it free of charge. So it's lifetime ink, basically. That's the Millennium Pen by Fisher Space Pens. Still has all the, the attributes of a Fisher Space Pen, still under pressure, still can write upside down, can write underwater, all that kind of good stuff. But it's just a larger uh, ink reservoir, if you will, <clears throat> that's permanent, that cannot be switched out. It's permanently part of the pen. And the way this one works is you take the cap off and you put it on like that. And then you write. And it's comfortable. It's very comfortable. It's got some nice ribbing right here. I use it a lot. It's on my desk and I, it's the pen that I usually use on the desk when I'm at my stand-up desk and I need to write something down. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, okay, uh, California sucks so bad. I hear they might start building tutors there. Cheat Town's in the house. I agree about the dryness, Craig. Compared to beautiful green Virginia, the landscape is, in much of California just looks exhausted and used up. Yeah, you have to be somewhere where there's a lot of irrigation going on. <clears throat> Same thing with Vegas, of course, right? As soon as you leave Vegas, you're in the desert, right? So there you go. There you go. And also, there are a lot of areas that are really marginal. I mean, you think about the areas like uh, Hollywood and Beverly Hills and all those nice areas, but a lot of the areas are very, very marginal <clears throat> Two towns in the house. Craig, what do you think of the Parker Jotter? I used one with a gel cartridge. I'm not familiar with it, but some of the older... I like the... the what was that Parker called? The one that was sterling silver? Was it a Parker 45 or something? I, I don't remember now, but there was a Parker that was pretty famous that a lot of people used that was sterling silver back in the day. Um, 
But I went to I went to the Dupont Pens when I when I was about you know eighteen nineteen years old. I went to the Dupont Pens, and kind of stuck with those, because I always got really good uh, luck out of those. And I still have a couple of them. I still have one that dates from that time period that uh, that is still working fine. It's had a had a the cartridge replaced a couple times, but it's a nice little pen. And then I have the one that I normally have in the pocket that's a little thicker, that's also a, a DuPont that I got maybe five years after I got the, the thinner one. So, and I also had a silver one at one point in time, a sterling silver one, but I sold it to a friend of mine uh, because I <clears throat> was wearing a gold watch and I didn't need the silver one anymore. Uh, let's see, Stig's in the house. Craig, of course you know what you're doing. It is such a matter of class. Okay, um, what were we referring to there? Um, uh, Kyle's in the house. Lucky for Craig, he has the uh, ability to retweet, retreat in winter. Well, you know, the winters, I've been here the last couple of winters most of the time, and the winters have been mild here in Maryland the last couple of winters. Uh, thank goodness for global warming, right? <laughs> so... So it, it's been relatively mild. Uh, so the need for me to, to spend as much time down in Florida isn't as pressing. I love Florida in the wintertime, but like I say, I've got some issues here with, with the company where I have to kind of be around more. And luckily for me, the, the, it's been mild. So there you go. So it hasn't been a problem. I'm definitely going to spend some time down there this winter. Uh, but just probably not the whole winter. <clears throat> so Kyle's in the house. Uh, I read that. Okay, Cheetown. Uh, there are a lot of marginal areas of California, areas of the Inland Empire, Sacramento County, and Central Valley, the Crystal Meth Empire. There you go. Well, even in L.A., I mean, you get out of the nice areas, and it can get dicey. It can get dicey pretty quick. So... One thing I like about Sarasota is the whole area around Sarasota is very nice. There's there's some areas that might be a little bit dicey, but for the most part, it's it's really nice, the whole area. And speaking of nice, the lovely Brianna is in the house, and she says hi to all. Maybe she can join us one show this week uh, and show us her progress on the hoop, see how she's doing. Let us know in the chat, Bri, if, you have, if you're making progress with the hoop. Maryland's best will never compare to California's best, so there's that. Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, there are some areas in Maryland that are very, very nice. Uh, Bethesda's nice. Uh, Potomac is nice. There's some really nice areas out in Potomac. The Potomac Polo Club's very nice. Of course, Congressional Country Club's very nice. Uh, so the Chevy Chase Club is very nice uh, down in Chevy Chase. There's a couple of really nice clubs. Uh, no, there's some really nice areas in Maryland. Don't don't uh, don't kid yourself. Uh, let's see. Stig is in the house. It was the Parker 75. Yeah, that's right. You're right. I use a 45 or a Mont Blanc uh, uh, on a daily basis. Okay. There you go. Uh, I knew somebody would have the answer. We got some sharp people in the chat here. T-Town says, Craig, what do you think of Prince George's County? That's got some issues. There's some issues over there. I do own the domain name PrinceGeorges.com, PrinceGeorges.com. So we'll see. Uh, Kyle's in the house. I wish I had the flexibility to live in a great place for summers and go elsewhere for winters maybe someday. Absolutely. Work towards that. Uh, Durs in the house. I heard Baltimore's really nice. Just kidding, huh? There actually are a couple of areas of Baltimore that are pretty nice. At least there used to be. There was an area. There's an area called Green Spring Valley. There were some nice places there. Nice large homes with you know, like 20 acre front lawns, where you'd see people like playing polo in the front lawn. I mean, there were some really nice areas. I think there still are, but again, a lot of it not so much. <laughs> That's right. Roland Park uh, is a, an area there in town that was pretty nice. Um, so there were a couple of areas that were pretty nice that we used to go and uh, hang out from time to time. Uh, let's see. Lance sent an email. 
Kevin's in the house. Any any truth that Virginia will make vaccine mandatory? Who knows? I think after the election, this whole virus thing and all the whole thing's going to go away. It's going to because the only reason it's perpetuating now is for political reasons, right? Uh, that the Democrats think they can win the election based on that, so they're making it seem like it's really, really bad, really, really bad, and all Trump's fault. So it's just a basically a political thing. Um, all right. <clears throat> all right, here's a Sunday poll. All right, I'm thinking of going down to just two watches. Which pair do you prefer as a two-watch rotation? Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, uh, I would probably... If I had to choose between these watches here, I would probably take the uh, Rolex Oyster Perpetual and the IWC. But that IWC looks like it's rose gold. So that's a problem. The truth be known, I would probably sell all of them and start over because uh, I'd rather have the Batgirl than the Batman. And I'd rather have like something like the 002 instead of the IWC. See the 002 right there in yellow gold? I'd much rather have that. So yeah, I'd probably have to I'd probably have to scrap all those and start over, unfortunately. That's probably what, what we'd have to do. We'd have to just fix up that whole situation there. Let's see what Lance sent over. The Lancester. <clears throat> Wow, look at this. This is interesting. This is interesting. Interesting looking dial on that. Case looks very similar to what you would see on a uh, snowflake. And I'm assuming it's got a screw down crown for that price point. But see, this is stainless steel. So for that kind of money, I mean, you can get a brand new snowflake. So I don't know. I, I don't know why you would buy that one. But it is interesting. It's kind of a cool looking dial. But again, I'd, I'd buy the newer one with the 2017 dial configuration with the Grand Seiko up at the top. Probably that's what I would do. Uh, so okay, any okay? I read that one. Craig, how does Bethesda, Maryland, compare to somewhere like Falls Church, Virginia, or McLean, Virginia? Well, McLean is big money. Bethesda's big money. Uh, Chevy Chase is big money. Potomac is big money. So McLean and uh, and Bethesda would be pretty much head neck and neck as far as a lot of high dollar folks living in those two areas falls church a little lesser less less than that so a step down from mclean mclean would be the tops the the kennedys for example have a nice estate in mclean um kirby road you know there's some really nice nice areas down in there so yeah kevin's in the house but bethesda is no joke okay uh the post office is the new virus okay kyle i would sell I would sell all of those watches unless it was the OP36. Maybe I'd keep that. Okay, Cheat Down's in the house. I have already keeps the OP39 and the root beer. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go for the um, the rose gold thing. Eduardo's in the house. I said the OP and the gold GMT. Uh, let's see, Craig. What's up with these guys stockpiling identical-looking Rolex sports models like they were limited edition Barbie dolls? <laughs> Good point. Well, I mean, they probably can't afford to buy the gold ones, so they end up buying a bunch of steel ones, and they end up with as much money in those bunch of steel watches that they could have bought a gold one, right? I mean, they end up shooting themselves in the foot, I think. I think it's self-destructive behavior. <clears throat> self-destructive behavior is what I'm thinking that might be. Uh, let's see here. Um <clears throat> Uh, Stig says, uh, well, Kyle, 
the winter also have something for it. The polar bears, uh, okay. Um, Scandinavia, we know about. Okay, there you go. Yeah, winter winter sports. Eduardo's in the house. Uh, Calif uh, Cheetown, California. I told him to sell the Batman and keep the root beer. Uh, what was the sizing on the GS Lance sent in? Uh, let me see if they have that. Let me see if they have that. Oh, it is titanium, at least. Uh, they, they're not showing the size. Let's see what it, if it's down here. You might have to check that model, SBGA109. You might have to check that, unless they have it down here. Let's see if they have it down here. Okay, yeah, 41 mils, but they're not showing the thickness. So it's the same size as a, uh, as a uh, snowflake. It's almost like a snowflake. It's very similar to Snowflake, but I guess just a different dial. You know, it is a different dial. It, it, it's interesting, but like I say, I mean, for that kind of money, you can actually get a brand new Snowflake. Actually, for less than that, once you get a discount, I think. I think you can do that. Uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay. Um... 41 mil, yeah, Lance, Lance answered that. Do you have pics of the bears? Uh, okay. Uh, but, 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 Craig, my forum buddy told me the steel is precious metal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Those that are in the business, they're going to say, hey, buy those things up. And they're going to say, by the way, I've got one you can buy if you want one. I'm going to get rid of, I'm, I'm getting rid of a couple of tabs here. Getting rid of a couple of tabs. Is he? Let me see if this video is back up that, that was made private. Double check this. Uh, look, it's still, it's still unavailable. <laughs> that video we talked about by that grinder, by uh, Rich Buddy, Rich Buddy. Uh, okay, I can close this. I can close this. I can close this. I can close this. Oh, Brianna was in, so we'll show Bree's website, BreeFitDance.com. BreeFitDance.com. Go there and find all her social media links and all that good stuff. And follow the lovely Brianna. You'll be glad you did. Okay. Um, all right. Well, have we reached a consensus that the 231 is, is the best sport watch option out there? period between all brands have we pretty much come to that conclusion because a it's super comfortable on wrist b it looks stunning stunning c it's super accurate and super durable and reliable in other words you won't have to worry about it you can just wear it literally for decades and just not even fool with it not even not even change the time this one's so damn accurate right i mean and it's just a joy to look at. And did I say it's super comfortable on wrist? There you go. I think this is about 130 grams and the sub is about 155. So there you go. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Craig, do you prefer the date just with a silver, black, white, or blue dial? I like the white and I like the blue dial. The silver's okay. But I, I, for better contrast, I think I'd go with the white or the blue. The blue is stunning. I like it. Yes. And I would get it with the Jubilee with the um, white gold fluted bezel and call it a day. What's next? Shall we start uh, uh, singing show tunes? Good point. I like show tunes. Has anybody seen that, that good old classic, My Fair Lady, My Fair Lady? That's a good one. That's a good show tune. A lot of, lot of good tunes in that one. Uh, and I didn't see Brianna. She must have taken off. She must have just popped in long enough so that she knows I would show her page and <laughs> took off. And I also did not see Leslie address my question about the 231 being like, 
amazing. Uh, so she probably took off. So it's a busy day, Sunday. I know a lot of people have a lot of things they've got to do. Uh, let's see. Keytown, California, date just with the fluted bezel or smooth because the bezel is quite important. See, the problem with the smooth bezel on those is that for these people that have phobias about scratches, they'll show every little scratch, right? The fluted bezel doesn't show any scratch. It doesn't, it doesn't, it just wears down slowly, but it doesn't show any scratches. Eduardo's in the house uh, with the fluted bezel. Okay, I did, okay, always fluted, says Mike, absolutely. And Kyle, part of my last name literally means bear. Okay, there you go. Durr is in the house. Does Choo Choo Charlie sing any show tunes? Yes, he does. We got to get him back on. I, I'll I'll try to reach out to Kent and get him back on. I think he can do some show tunes. Um, let's see. Um, down in California, I'm looking for another day chest, either a two tone with a black dial or a two-tone white tapestry dial. Yeah, I, I would think the white tapestry dial would be super cool. Uh, there was a message held for review. Isn't that something? Okay. Sell me a sub... sub okay. Craig, would you feel safe enough wearing that 231 around dangerous London? Well, my gosh, if I was going to feel... If I was going to be worried about my watch, I think I'd be worried about a lot of other things too like just getting mugged period i mean <laughs> so i tried i try to stay away from dicey sections of town unless i have you know significant security with me and even then it's best just to not hang out in dangerous areas right so yeah you just have to plan around that sort of thing it's like these people that always have issues, right? It's like they usually put themselves in harm way, harm's way in the first place. Like they park their car in a dicey area so the car got broken into. Duh, imagine that, right? I mean, you, you have to, the 5P principle, proper planning prevents poor performance, right? That's the deal. <clears throat> if you plan poorly, things happen. So, yeah, the least of my worries would be the watch, I think. I mean, you know, uh, so, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'd be wearing the watch, but I'd, I probably wouldn't be in the dangerous area in the first place would probably be the answer to that question. Stig's in the house. And if you are, you walk fast and act like you know where you're going, right? That's always key. Act like you know what you're doing. And a lot of times the thugs will, will leave you alone if you look like you're not an easy target. They'll go for the easy target as opposed to you, maybe. So there's that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Stig says, I have missed the last shows, but how are we right now doing hate tuners and GS high beats? GS high beats are okay. I just think I would go with the spring drive, given the choice between the two. Let's see. Chi Town's in the house. Why don't these guys who own multiple Rolexes and live in dicey areas liquidate some of those watches and use the money to live in a decent neighborhood? That's a good point. <clears throat> That's a good point. Yeah, I would think. I would think you would want to live in a pretty safe area, right? I think that should be job one. I will try to get a GSAD in the next few weeks. I think 231 is too big for my 6.5 inch wrist. We'll see. It might be. You might be pushing it uh, with the 6.5 inch wrist. You might be pushing it. I think you should just get an 002 stunner and call it a day. I think that would go nicely on your 6.5 inch wrist. I think that would work. It would have a nice presence. And uh, just, just wear that. <clears throat> so there you go. Actually, on that size wrist, I think you should probably wear a uh, a 36 mil watch. I think. Uh, ch -ch -ch would probably be the good bet. Uh, Kyle's in the house. What do you guys prefer to watch in your spare time between SJW triggered videos and... Steve Crowler's Change My Mind episodes. Uh, watch, okay. Uh, what, uh, okay, we're, gonna, we're trying to find out about a rotation there. K 
Kevin says, is a Datejust 36 millimeter a one and done? Absolutely. Absolutely. That was my first Rolex was a 36 mil Datejust. The one I had had an engine turn bezel and a uh, Jubilee that was made in the USA. And uh, I loved it. Bought it in about 1978. Maybe Lance can find a picture. Can Lance find a picture of a 1978 Rolex with a engine turn bezel and a Made in USA Jubilee bracelet? <clears throat> and Cheat Town, Craig, uh, do you like walnuts? Yes, I eat walnuts every day. And uh, pistachios and almonds in my almond milk that I make. I make my own almond milk. So that's how I consume the almonds every day. I have some almond milk in my oatmeal that I make every freaking day. Durs in the house. Uh, Kevin D. <laughs> for a lady. <laughs> He's saying at 36 mils for a lady. Wrong. Durr's still got the big watch thing going on. But Durr. For God's sakes, just start wearing the date eight. Life is too short. You'll find out. See these youngsters, they don't they don't seem to understand. They they don't understand. Time moves by a lot faster than you think. You're gonna like that. You're gonna be my age, right? And you're gonna say, man, why didn't I wear the date eight more? Why did I wear those junkers? Why did I even own those junkers? Why didn't I get out and about and just wear the date eight and call it a day? That's what you're going to say. And you're also going to say, by the way, why didn't I put aside some Bitcoin? That's what you're going to say when you're my age. You're going to say, darn, I, I could have bought Bitcoin at around $10,000 a coin. My goodness, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? That's what you'll be saying. You'll be kicking yourself and saying, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It's like I didn't listen to my Canadian buddy. I could have bought Bitcoin when it was like 10 cents. I could have mined it in the very, very early days. He told me about it. I was so stupid. I didn't buy it until it got to like $30. And then it crashed way down. And and then I bought some more. But, you know, it. I, I could have gotten it when it was like 10 cents. <clears throat> but I didn't listen to the guy. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. For people that don't have 25k for a watch, maybe consider the cheaper version of the 002. Well, you mean the steel thing? I don't know. I would just get out and hustle and make some money and save up and get the gold. Go for the gold. I say go for the gold. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Cheat Town's in the house. What does an uh, S? JW and Steel Sports Watch Rolex investor have in common. They both think $5 t-shirts are fashionable. Uh, let's see. Durr says, uh, this wouldn't be a Craig Ship live show if I didn't say Tudor sucks and if Craig didn't tell me to wear the date eight. There you go. Absolutely. Kyle, don't you agree? P p p let me. Am, am I off base on that, on telling Durr that he should wear the date eight? Let me know in the chat what you guys think about that, as the pontiff would say. Let me know what, what, you, what you think about that. <clears throat> Should he be wearing the day date? Uh, let's see. Um, I think we would all love to see Durr's collection. It seems really good. Yeah, you know, I don't know why he won't show it. I guess because we'd probably pick it apart a little bit, right? Maybe, maybe he doesn't want it to be picked apart. Durr's in the house. My collection has a couple of good watches in it. There you go. And we could tell him which ones to weed out. Which ones to weed out. Stig's in the house. Craig, what is your experience on keeping two automatic watches or one comma five in rotation? To me, it's kind of... Well, I again, I, I had some problems keeping the, um, the Date 8 and the GMT running in rotation. I would occasionally have the day date stop on me because I wasn't wearing it enough. It did get to be a hassle, and that's why I bought the um, the Omega Seamaster 120 quartz to rotate with the day date. I kind of gave up on trying to do that. 
because the 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 day day needed more wrist time to wind up. Th this watch is very efficient on wrist time. It needs very little wrist time to to wind up the spring drive. The day day was kind of a wrist hog. It wanted like you know six or seven hours a day uh, to keep running. GMT didn't need didn't seem like it needed quite as much. I don't know what was going on there, but but in any event, one or the other would occasionally stop, and it got to be kind of a hassle, and that's why I went to rotating with a quartz um, uh, Omega Seamaster 120, and then I I started rotating after that. I started rotating it with the Apple Watch, and then I got that. Uh, that SBDC 007 and rotated it with that for a while, the day date. And then I started just not wearing the day date. And then, you know, that started because I was having trouble reading it. And so that's how that whole thing went down. Uh, Jaden says day date every day. Uh, t -t 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 uh, Trump is on TV now killing the vaccine with a plasma treatment, whatever that is. Okay. Um, let me see here if there's anything else I need to catch up on in, in the chat here uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's see Dur says I might wear the day date when I'm grilling fillets in the grill but I don't want it to melt off my wrist like butter Eduardo's in the house. I can vouch for what Craig said about the two automatics. Uh, Kyle says, uh, I could only answer that question after seeing all of his watches. Lance says, sent a link to a stunning Rolex Explorer. Okay, we'll take a look. We will take a look. <clears throat> This is a reactive show. This is a reactive show. Okay. This is very interesting. This is very interesting. Very attractive. I like it. <clears throat> it says Explorer style. It's not really an Explorer. It's just because it's got the 369. It's also got the 12. Uh, it's it's attractive though. I like a lot of these vintage uh, dials. I, I think, and this one looks to be in pretty good shape. It's heavily polished. I don't know if it was polished like that from the factory. It probably had brushed on the top. Right. It's a nice looking piece though. What is the um price? Thirty nine fit oh sold. He <laughs> Lance, you keep showing us these watches that are sold. <laughs> You're getting us all excited, and then the watch is sold. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Durr says, you have to wind the spring drive model about 100 times to give it a full power reserve. Yeah, but if you're wearing it regularly, you don't ha ever have to wind it. Mine stays pinned all the time on full, and, and I wear it probably at least six to eight hours a day right even when I'm wearing the stunner I you know I still switch off and wear this I wear this for example when I'm all night long when I'm sleeping and tossing and turning and so on and I wear you know probably four or five hours during the day even if I'm wearing the um, the gold stunner out and about I'll come back and I put this on so it stays pinned most of the time it stays fully charged just by I never unscrew this crown. Never. The only time I unscrew that crown is when there's less than 31 days in a month. That's it. Uh, and I might start skipping that because I don't really read the date on this. So I might start not even bothering to change the date. So there's that. I'd be happy, Camper, if this didn't even have the date on it, to tell you the truth. 
But anyway, we we all digress. I, I stopped by one of my buddies' house the other day, and he was mowing his lawn wearing his Datejust 36 he bought in 1986. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. T-Town's in the... Where are your watches, folks? T-Town in the house. If the day date was like butter, then it would have been melted by Craig's hotness. <laughs> Uh, by the way, Brianna, what's your take on the on the two three one stunner on wrist? How do you think it looks on wrist? All right, if you're still hanging out, she bopped by about it, bopped right out of the chat and then bopped back in. You notice how she did that? That's pretty slick. That's pretty slick. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and by the way, Bree, comment if you're still there. Comment on if you get a Rolex, w will you wear it all the time, or are you going to put it in a box somewhere? Let us know what you'll do. Kyle's in the house. In your opinion, Craig, what should a person's net worth be if they are purchasing $30,000 watches? If age is a factor, let's assume they are my age, 35. Um, okay, so... Some of that depends on the real benefit of you having that nice watch. Is it going to help you in your vocation? Like if you're in a high-end sales position, let's say you're selling jets or something or whatever, you're selling expensive cars and you're dressing real nice and so on, you, and you have a nice power watch on, that might actually help you be successful. So it's almost like a tool. So I think you can stretch. I normally say one week's income when you're younger is what you should spend on a watch. So if you're making $1,000 a week, then you should probably only spend $1,000 on a watch. Now, obviously, again, if, if that watch is a real benefit to your work, I mean, maybe I would stretch and say four weeks, you know, a month's income. You know, so let's say you're making $10,000 a month and you want to spend $10,000 on a watch. I think that makes sense. But to stretch it to 30000 uh, is a stretch, I think. Um, so, yeah, I, I would think you should be re relatively high income and or be really financially set um, before you're buying $30,000 watches. So, yeah, that's the way I would uh, would address that. Unless, of course, you're buying and selling them and it's more like inventory and you're, you're turning them and you're making money so you're smart enough to get a really good buy on the watch and then wear it for a few months or whatever and then get top dollar for it when you sell it. That's how, kind of how I did when I was young, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old. I would buy a watch out of the Washington Post. Of course, there was no Craigslist back then. There was no internet, right? So... I would buy one from the original owner. I was in an affluent area, so you'd see people advertise their Rolex in the paper, and they'd want to sell it because they got another one or whatever. And I could get a pretty good buy. I'd go with cash, and I'd get a good buy, and then I'd wear it for a while, and then I'd sell it to one of my buddies or whatever, like Paul Fapel, who you guys have seen, I think. You know, he bought my red sub. And so, you know, each time I would make some money and so I was kind of like wearing watches for free, right? That's another way to do it. So they were more like inventory. That's kind of dealing in watches, if you will, right? That's a different thing. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, it's classy on the wrist, says the lovely Brie. And there is in the house. I put my 229 on with an empty power reserve right before... I have ladies come over, and by the end of the night, my power reserve is on full. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Leslie's in the house. Are you buying that, Leslie? Are you buying what Durr just said? You, you, or do you think he's exaggerating just a little bit? Leslie said, I've seen the 231 in person. It's stunning. There you go. And I would definitely wear the Rolex, says, says the lovely Brie. Well, there you go. And I think Leslie's wearing hers, and I'm, my guess is hers is doing really good because I think it's only plus one second in a week. That's amazing. Sent the link to Tiffany & Company, day date, not in the best condition but rare. Okay, we'll look at that. I, I remember I used to go to Tiffany's and see those watches with uh, Tiffany on them. It was cool. 
<clears throat> it was cool. A buddy of mine actually had one. He bought one at Tiffany's. I think it was a Milgau's. <clears throat> uh, but, okay, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look. Okay, here we go. There we go. Yeah, and I don't think I would pay a premium just to have a Tiffany & Company one. I mean, you know, it's it's kind of cool, but I'm not so sure I would pay a premium. It's not terrible condition. It's got some stretch, but my my first 88 was <laughs> had a lot more stretch than this and I wore it and enjoyed it I could wear that watch and enjoy it but that's a lot of money that's a lot of money for an 18238 1988 I'd say I don't know what that converts to in US dollars but my guess is my guess is it's it's too much. Uh, let's see here. Eduardo. Okay, I already read that. Okay. All right. We are caught up. We got 38 live viewers. And I'm going to show the lovely Brianna's website again because I can and because she was kind enough to answer the question in the chat. <clears throat> and I think she's going to be very successful. Very successful. I think so. She's got a head on her shoulders, and she's, she works. She's diligent. Diligent. What do you think about that? And she's always wanting to improve herself. So, And she's willing to make things happen. She's willing to make things happen. And I think that's what it takes to succeed these days. And, Craig, what do you think of the Pagoda Mercedes SL? Pagoda Mercedes SL. I'm not sure what that what that was. Maybe you'll have to send me a picture for me to look. I don't re, I don't recall. Jog my memory. I'm not sure about that, but I like I always like the 300 SLs. Uh, I, I preferred the Roadsters. Uh, if I was going to get one to drive and use, those are cool cars. Eduardo's in the house. Craig, when you saw them in the store, were they already selling at a premium? Oh, no, 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 no. This was when Tiffany was selling them. Th they just were Rolex AD. And the, and the watches they had had Tiffany and company on them. I mean, that's just the way it was. Now, this was in the late 70s. <clears throat> Absolutely. I don't know when they, la when they stopped putting Tiffany and company on there. Uh, but, you know, they used to always do that. They always had Tiffany & Company on there. It was just part of the deal they had with Rolex, right? Uh, and Durr's in the house. That's a steal. 28000 Canadian is only like $25 U.S. <laughs> Maybe one Bitcoin, right? I think that's the deal, one Bitcoin. Uh, let's see here. Um, I put on my sub when I got up in the morning and switch to my SKX at night because it it's light I guess it's light and it seems to work do any of you have any experience with watch winders yes yeah, see I don't like the whole concept of watch winders so yeah I'm not a fan of that whole situation Auto Europa Naples has covered many of those old SLs very cool okay uh, <clears throat> sent a link to a gold date just with a bark bezel and bark jubilee and is new old stock whoa all right let's take a look at this this is probably what we're going to wrap up with i don't know how we could wrap up with anything any cooler than a new old stock date just okay so we got we're going to do the uh, sl also we'll do that next Okay. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm not a fan of the Roman numerals, but I do like the white dial. And the bark finish has grown on me over the years. It really has. 
I, I used to be like, no, that's a pass. And I do like the um, traditional clasp with the micro adjustments. I like that. That's so cool that that is new old stock, or at least in mint condition. That is so cool. I could relate to that. I, I think that is cool. All right, two thumbs up on that. Expensive, but two thumbs up on that. Okay, all right, let's take a look at the um, SL in question. I don't remember these. What... Um, what uh, what makes it a Pagoda SL? I don't understand what makes that a, a Pagoda SL. That, that's obviously a European model because it's got the European headlights on it. Um, but I, I don't understand what makes it a, a Pagoda versus a, just an SL. And by the way, those rusted just looking at them. I mean, that's that's the problem with those older SLs is, is they had real rust problems. So you got to really watch it. Mercedes didn't really lick the rust issue until, you know, the like the 80s, right? All the way up through the 70s. I mean, they they had pretty pretty nasty rust rust problems. As uh, Steve a Rolex AD, no, he's not. Craig, have you ever owned any vintage Rolex spoons? No, I didn't even know they made those. I uh, just sent an email. Okay, um, bark finish watches make it look like it went through a wood chipper. Uh, pagoda because of the roof design. Well, I guess that's just some slang term that somebody, um, some hipster put on them. But I don't remember back in the day anybody referring to them that way. Okay. Um, all right, let's see what else we've got here. I think we're caught up. We are caught up. We're caught, caught the heck up. We're going to wrap this puppy. Let's let's show show the lovely Brianna's website one more time, and wrap this puppy up. Uh, let's see. Archie keeps talking about wanting an SL, but I think he's referring to a strange lady boy. <laughs> I hear you. You got to watch it with those older SLs. Like I said, they you just looked at them funny and they rusted. Derek says, "Wait, Craig." Derek. We talked about date, date, dates big time, several times throughout the show. Several times throughout the show. Hey, everybody, click subscribe. Click the uh, notification thingamajig. And tune in next time. Tune in next time. I do have a video shoot tomorrow afternoon. I'll see if I, if I get back in time to do a show. I will. But it's possible I'll miss tomorrow, uh, depending on when I get back from the video shoot. All right, everybody, carry on.